bikers, I'm Chloe Taylor. And I'm Johnny Thompson, and welcome to Fit for Racing with our special guest, Chloe, where we talk about how important hips are for riding. We're gonna take a look at absolute strength, strength endurance, mobility, and so much more. So keep watching so you can be the best rider you can be. Peace. <laughs> so Chloe, glutes. How do you yeah. feel on long descents at the moment? At the moment my glutes are getting really sore on rougher, more traversy tracks. So really pumping in my glutes, which is yeah. painful. So this is something that's common. So we're going to take a look at building absolute strength and strength endurance first. This will also counteract some lower back pain and hip dysfunction. So we're gonna go over and take a look at a traversy descent and take a look at positions and how to strengthen those in the gym. Stormy. <laughs> now we're back in the gym. We're gonna take a look at the first absolute strength movement, the stiff leg deadlift, also known as a Romanian deadlift. So if we take a look, what we're gonna try and achieve with this movement is a single joint movement at the hip. So as much as you can, we're gonna keep the shins vertical because as soon as the knee comes forwards, that engages the quad. So what we want really is the purpose of this, glutes, hamstrings, stability through the core. Chloe's really flexible. She can get in this position well. If, however, she wasn't, it might be worth starting with the bar a little higher from the ground. So from here, you'll see as she stands up, so stand up there, Chloe, bam. Shin stays perfectly vertical over the ankle, and then it's an extension from the hip and not too far. So it's important that you don't overextend the spine at the top. Come back down again, bam, piece of cake. So it's really important to stabilize the core and keep that spine neutral without overextending or flexing the spine. There is the stiff leg deadlift. For absolute strength, hit five sets of five with two to three minutes in between each one, as heavy as possible while maintaining that core stability. The second movement, the lunge. What's really good about this is it's a single leg movement. We can get more range through the hip by putting your foot on a plate. So take a look. Chloe's gonna step back and look at the hip here. So stop at the bottom there, Chloe, so we can see. Look at the angle of the hip. It is beyond what you saw on the stiff leg deadlift, which means we get more range through the glute and a bit more hamstring. So standing from that position. Whoa! <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I was like, how long is she going to make this? I'll let you go straight back down and up on this. <laughs> so down, big range, standing, and then a tap with that supporting foot, and then repeat. So this is another good absolute strength movement. So we're looking at a range of three to five potentially, depending on where you're at in the season, or you can up that to 12 to 15 if it's an assistance movement for some previous compound lifts that you've done. Great movement, great range. Let's look at the next one. You feel alive, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Cover and cash. Which is the single leg deadlift. So this, as it sounds, single leg. Chloe's got a kettlebell, but you can use a barbell, dumbbell, or any kind of weight. So if you're doing this at home, you can load up with maybe a drum of water. And Am I going take... too many times? Sorry? I feel like I start... You keep, you keep going, you keep going. <laughs> <laughs> this is an assistance movement for strength, so more reps the better, like 15 to 20. So if you take a look, again, single joint movement, 
shins vertical, back leg comes out to match the torso, which keeps the spine safe. Trying to resist the rotation through the middle. And then we get all the goodness a little lower into the hamstring, but also in the glute as well, which we want to be working today. Single leg deadlifts, really good for keeping balance. So if you've got side to side differences, this can even them out or certainly help you identify. Swap arms. Go on. Oof. First one's always a tricky one. Oh, yeah, not so bad. Well practiced, Chloe. <laughs> We've taken a look at absolute strength, which is lower reps, all about range within that loaded movement. Now we're going to look at muscular endurance or strength endurance, which is a little bit different. We don't necessarily need the range, but we need the volume under constant tension. So let's take a look at the first movement. This is a movement that's probably new to a lot of people. If you have the ability to set up like this, then do it. It's a fantastic movement to build that endurance in the glute med and throughout the back of the hip. So a dip belt, lots of bands, so we can get varying amount of tension depending on how many bands we have and the thickness of them. And then you're gonna stand up, Chloe, from there. How's that feel? Tight. Tight, <laughs> good. And then simply march the legs. So as if you're walking, go on, knee up, other side. Try not to Quick rock. Mark. No, you can rock, you rock. So you load one side and then the weight, it's funny how it works, but it definitely does work. It doesn't look like it'll do anything at all. Mm. Keep going, keep going. That's it, march, march, march. There you go. Yeah, it feels like, it, am I trying to stop it from pinging me back to the floor? Yeah, exactly. We'll check back in in about 30 seconds when Chloe's Struggling. <laughs> so he's got Get no the glutes burn. left. Get the burn. Yeah, no, it's taking effect. Is it taking effect? Yes. Where are you feeling it? In my glutes. In your glutes? See? Who would have guessed it? <laughs> it's like walking on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> walking plus some. Because I always walk like this. <laughs> you will from now on. Oof. Yeah? Yes. You done? Oof. There we go. Muscular endurance, what was that? 45 seconds to a minute. If you do five sets of that with about a minute off in between, you'll feel the benefits. It's a great activation movement if you're gonna do anything in the gym beforehand, like squats or deadlifts. Give it a go, see how good your glutes can be. understand that not everyone's going to have access to a sled, particularly one with wheels on that you can use inside. But if you do, absolutely use it. It's going to really build those glutes. So the technique for this is just to lean your body in with straight arms dropping the chest. And don't simply walk with it, but really consider flexing your glute as you take each step. So big purposeful march. Go for it, go for it. And if you see the range goes through the hip with each step, come on back. <laughs> the range through the hips, great, but then it's the constant working of the glutes. It's harder this way. It's harder this way, is it? Woo! Looking good. Feel it already? Yeah. This is also good for calves, which is obviously important for riding. So we get multiple benefits. And of course, cardio benefits to this one as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A suggestion might be that you do 20 meters, then rest 30 seconds and repeat 10 to 20 times. It's actually good with a partner. So this gym is about 12 meters long. Chloe could push it one direction, I push it back as she walks, and there you go, partner workout that keeps everyone involved, building their glutes. For functional hips, we also need mobile hips. 
And if you're a rider like Chloe, you're likely to be tight through your quads and hip flexor. This is the go-to single movement to cure that. With the band, it really helps. It's a distraction of the hip, but it helps pull forward. So ultimately what we want is the opposite of what we've been doing with all of those glute and hamstring movements, and that's to push the hip forwards. But bracing the core and clenching your glute at the back will also help it's all the movement then. You tried, didn't you? <laughs> I had to stop. <laughs> do it, do it. Clinch, pull forwards, and then breathe through. You can do it. <laughs> so if you don't have a band or you want some extra, you can bring this back leg up. Can you can you reach that? Can you reach it? You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Whoa. Oh my god, lost. Right, hold there, hold there. Brilliant. Hold that until you relax through it. So when you start, there's gonna be lots of tension. Your body's gonna try and reject it. Breathe your way through until you can relax and be comfortable in that position. Two minutes is a minimum. Go up to three and then swap. Three times each side every day and that can cure quite a lot of the dysfunction in your hip and lower back problems from riding up hills that you might suffer from but ultimately getting a more mobile, functional hip. <laughs> let's, let's let you go <laughs> and take a look at uh, mobility on the hamstring. So finally for mobility, we're gonna look on the other side. Obviously there's more mobility that you can do to help your hip function. We're just gonna give you these two because they're the best bang for book. This is a PNF, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation type technique. <laughs> I got the actual Hello. words and I was like, what? <laughs> oh, now I'm done, job done. <laughs> PNF explained. So what we're looking at here is the same hip joint movement as say the stiff leg deadlift. So what we're doing is stretching the glute and hamstring, but from there, we're also being aware that if you went further, your hip might come off the ground. So what we don't want is the range to the detriment of your spinal curve. So solid, four points of contact, shoulder blades and hips on the ground. And then with the band, what you can do is, once you're sitting in that stretch, take a breath, and for six seconds, flex your hamstring as hard as you can. So three, two, one, flex! Flex, 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 flex. <laughs> keep it on, keep it on, keep it on, and relax. The important thing here is not necessarily the flex. That's then just gonna help you go a little bit deeper. So when you relax after the flex, that's where the benefits come from the range. You do that three times. So stretch for 30 seconds. Six seconds hard, go, 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 go. Then relax and go deeper each time. And you'll be amazed at how much further that leg can go. This is a great stretch for anything in the gym that demands lots of range. Or if you're suffering from a low back issue, then this is good to prepare for any movements like squats. Good? Yes. Yes. <sighs> We can't have functional hips without good core. So this one side plank pyramid will really help that. Quite often people focus on the front and back, that sagittal up and down movement, which might give you beach abs, but we want functional athletic core stability. So isometric holds, fantastic. Side planks for the obliques, even better. So we're going straight up onto the side plank. Now try this, the description of this video will hold all of the information that you need about all of these movements. So take a look. This is our favorite, the core pyramid. You're gonna do six seconds on, four seconds off. Off. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do that six times on one side. Then flip over, do six times the other side. Four times, four times, two times, two times. Yeah? And that's in a six second on, four second off format. Then the next time you do it, try eight times, six times, four times. 
as I say, the description in the bio will have all of the answers to these questions. And you keep going in that format until you can't do any more, but you have a core of granite able to make most of those functional, powerful hips that you've built with everything else that we've taught you today. Thanks to your input, input club. <laughs> <laughs>